so these are the these so these two I meant, meant to give you I made a mistake but they they will be showing up on your exam so you should take a look at them um, the first first two you can do like I said you can either change them to X, you can either change them to radical form remember what's on the bottom is the type of jail it is so it's a two type jail so it'd be square root of a hundred to the third power you can write it that way. Um, you can also write it, this is also the same thing as 100 to the 1 half power to the third power. You could also write it the other way too. You could also write it, if you wanted, if for some reason you wanted to do it the other way, you could do it 100 to the third power to the 1 half power. Or you could even do it for root of 100 to the third power. Any one of these is equivalent. The ones that are most helpful, I think, is probably is probably these two, right? Either one of those two is probably more helpful than the other ways. So, just bear that in mind. And the same thing is true over here. Only difference is this is a three type jail, right? So this would be a cube root. The the the, the one third would be the power, and the two would be on the top. So you can do it either one of those ways. Are people wanting to go over these now? The top two. Anytime I'm ready. Okay. So, um, so, so yeah. So, you could do the square root first, right? What's the square root of a hundred? Ten. Ten. So this becomes ten to the third. What's ten to the third? One thousand. One thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's those are the kind of things that we expect you to know. Um, you know, ten to any power, ten to the third power is just a 10, you know, it has three zeros in it. 10 to the fourth would have four zeros in it. And if you, if you can't remember, remember 10 to the one, or 10 squared is, you know, two zeros. So that's kind of, you know, kind of helps you get going with that. I don't want to confuse people with that. Um, and then this next one over here, split these up. Um, again, this can be written as negative 125 cube root squared. Or it could be written as, it's, uh, this is equivalent to negative 125 to the one-third power to the second power. Right, those, that'd be the easier, you know, the, the cleaner way is either one of these two. So if you take the, to the one-third power, which is the same thing as a cube root, those, these are equivalent, right? Raising something to the one-third power is the cube root. Those are the, the stuff inside. If I just took this part away, right, these two things are the same. They both mean the same thing. Everybody understanding that? Okay. So, um, what multiplied by itself three times gives me 125? And you could break this down if you wanted to. If you're like, I'm not sure, then you could do this. You could say, okay, let me just do this part first. This is a negative, and then 125 is, well, let me see. 125 is, I know it has a 5 in it. So then I left with 25. Oh, and 25 is 5 times 5. And I like to circle the leaves here. So this is the same thing as 5 times 5 times 5. And of course, they break out in, I forget the squared part. Um, they break out in groups of 3. So these 3 break out together. The negative comes out, and you have negative 5. And then we square that. Uh, what's negative 5 squared? 25. Positive 25. So that's the tricky part. Remember, it's the whole, whatever you find here, it's the whole thing squared. So some of you might have made a mistake and put negative 25. Right? That's pretty common. I, I did it a totally different way, but still got the same one. Then that's totally great. You, okay. you, so you squared 125 first? Uh, yeah, I squared 125 first, and then I, uh, and then I cubed the... Keep rooted it? Yeah, 15, 6, 25 to 25, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, so that's still. Yeah, right. that's, okay. you can totally do it that way. Okay. It's just mathematically it's harder because then you gotta say, oh, how many, what's the, what's the square root or, or cube root of this really big number right. that you do, may not know offhand? Yeah. So, same as the first one, you could have done it that way too. You could have done one, you know, 100 to the third power and then screw with that. It's just, it's just a harder number to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so Alex, these two problems will be on the exam as well um, as possibilities. And, the, and then let's take a look at the next problem now. Take a look at number 12 and work on those ones.
Um, so I'm going to work on number 12. Now I'm screening just a second. That's this one right here. I know we've done one similar to this already, so I, I don't feel too bad throwing such a last minute. Um, the one we just did a second ago, that's actually going to be extra credit, but this will be not extra credit. So, because I felt like this, this is stuff we've done often enough. With these ones, we're putting in, remember, f of negative 1. Is f of negative 1 my y or my x? f of negative 1 is my y. x is what? Negative 1. So we're going to put in negative 1 for x and find what y is. Does that make sense? So, oh, so this is y equals instead of x equals? Um, I, I, want what, I, want what, I want what y is. So this is, this means what is y when x is what? Oh, negative 1. Negative 1. So you're going to put in negative 1 for x. Oh. Right, so here I do, so I do f of negative 1 is equal to, and I write everything else the same. Well, whenever I see an x, I'm going to put a giant parentheses. And what goes inside of there? Negative one. Negative one. And you probably want to do it that way, but the parentheses, so you realize that this is not three minus one, it's three times negative one. That's kind of a long minus. I'll fix that. <clears throat> and then just figure out what that, what that value is. Uh, 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 Alright, so let's take a look at these. We'll take a look at this first one that since I already have that one done, the f of negative one kind of. So let's see, if I work this out, I'm gonna you know, do the inside first, obviously. So three times negative one is negative three plus four. What's negative three plus four? I have three dollars. I said I owe three dollars, I have four dollars. My net worth is one dollar, and the square root of one is one. Right? Everybody on board with that part? <coughs> yes? No? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. I did the bottom one first because okay. that was already there. All right. Um, let's take a look at, the, at this top one then. Let's see. I'm going to put twenty in this one, so that's this would be um, this would be equal to square root of three times twenty plus four, right, because the 20 is you know, this 20, right? So three times 20 is 60, <coughs> plus four, square root of 64. So what times itself is 64? Oh, oh no, I totally screwed up. Yes, there are two answers to this, aren't there? What? Square root of 25, yes, there are two no. answers to this. Oh, this is this is huge. This is huge for your exam. One or what else multiply by itself gives me negative. one. Negative one. But you have to put both. Yeah. It'll cost you a point if you don't put both. So I'm glad we went through this. Especially because it's very easy to mess it up. Wait, for Jesus. <coughs> oh, going back to negative one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what's what's the square root of sixty-four? Eight. eight or oh. negative eight. Negative eight. So you want us to put it always. So like both. plus or minus. So that, but then. The yeah, or you could say, or you could say plus or minus eight. That's also that's also fine. But that's Does that make sense? Square root. That's right. That's only the square root. Okay. Cube. cube root is not the same. Cube root. Is right. It actually matters. Okay. Yeah. So right. Cube root because negative one times negative one gives me one. One times one gives you one. So these has, this one has the square roots will have two answers. And then like Fox said, we're going to talk about the cube roots and how those are different right now, actually. So here, um, let me see if I can make this bigger. So this first one, we're going to do this is equal to the cube root of 5 plus 2 times, what goes in there? Negative 2. 
All right, so then let's see, cube root of five plus, mm, plus negative four, so minus four. Everybody all right with that part? So this is the cube root of one. All right, so cube root of one, what multiplied by itself three times gives me one, only positive one. Because negative one times itself three times, negative one times negative one times negative one would be negative one. Everybody on board? So this only has one answer. Negative one would not work. Because right, negative, negative one times negative one times negative one would be negative one, and that's not negative, it's positive. So this one only has one answer. Well, one third. I'm sorry? Oh, no, that wouldn't work. One third. Right, that wouldn't work. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> one third times one third one times yeah. one third is like 127. Oh, yeah, I got the answer right. I was just yeah. Yeah, you're just posing questions. Yeah. yeah. I, I like I love the fact you're wondering. Yeah, I just want to talk about that. Okay, so cube root of five plus two times x when x is negative sixteen. Okay, so negative sixteen is thirty-two, so it's cube root of five minus thirty-two. So that's the cube root of negative twenty-seven. So remember, you can never, ever, ever take the square root of a positive number, but you can totally take the cube root of a negative number. Square root right. of a positive number? You can't take a, I mean, you can't take the square root of a negative. negative number. My bad. You can never take the square root of a negative number, but you can take the cube root. Because remember, the cube root is this little s thing, right? So it's, it's all real numbers. And right, this is x, cube root of x. Whereas the square root of x, is this little swishy thing like that? So it has, it has, um, it has, it, it can't be all. It, it, its domain is is limited. It's, it's not. Is there going to be a negative square root on the test? No. And if there was, then you probably made a mistake, or you could put does not exist. Oh. But we're likely you made a mistake as a hint. Okay. Um, or, or it's possible I made a mistake, but these are not, I've, people have, have seen these questions before and haven't had issues with them. All right, so what multiplied by itself three times gives me negative 27? Negative three. Negative three. Good. Okay. Um, what else do you need to know? You need to know that for the square root of x, right, it's going to be, Um, you, here's the center, and then we go one, 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 right? And then we'd go, yep, four, up two, and then we'd go over. Like that. Yeah. Right, so you know that this is sort of the there's sort of like a one here and a one there. And there's sort of like a you know, four here and two there. And there's sort of like a nine there and a three there. You're right? I mean, so, you know, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not going to have you graph, graph the basic one. I'd have you shift it, your know, left, right, or up, down. And you should remember that the left, right shift is on the inside and the opposite inside. So if I said shift it left two, up, or we'll say up three, And that would shift it left two, up three. Its new center would be right here. And you go one, one, two, uh, four, two, nine,
Um, and it's and its formula would be on the inside. Inside would be left two is remember on the inside it's opposite, so the x plus two. And the outside is regular. That's the up down of three. And so I said write formula and say okay left right that's inside, and because it's inside it's the opposite. And then F3 is on the outside. And the picture, the picture is the picture is correct. How it should be. Left should be is left and up is up. Yeah. It's just it's just the formula part where the left right is weird because it's on the inside. Um, you should also remember that the um, you should also remember that the the S thing goes this one, and then one over one up. Eight over two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and up two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so it does this weird super little S thing. And this is um, y equals cube root of x. And again, you shift that. Um, are there any problems from the practice exam you folks want to go over? We've got <coughs> 25 minutes left, and then we'll take a five minute break, and then we'll start the exam. So I need a problem. Who has a problem? Um, 7A. 7A. I knew they were going to be a problem. Oh, I have the wrong one. Is that 7A? Uh, yeah, I have the wrong one. Oh, yeah, I just looked at I, I'm um, not the one we did in class, because that one, I think we did all the ones in class already, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I can tell whatever was not there. Okay. I feel like we did all of them in class. I don't think I have done this whole thing. So we can totally do... Are we going to be uh, doing... Uh, finding the... Uh, what is that? The Uncapped intercept on a, a yes. quadratic or something? Because I don't know if we had any problems. We did the Y intercept, but I don't know if we found right. the X. So they should fall on grids. As long as you do this... So the X and Y intercepts, as long as you follow... Like if we're like this one up here. Yeah, that one's easy. No, to this see. one has has doesn't have an x-intercept, but the y-intercept is right down where it crosses. Um, I don't think I have the one that. You're oh yeah, but I mean, if, if we were doing the whole I thing, we're going to do a long time ago. If you didn't have the graph, and you were just like. I would not ask you to do it without the graph. Oh okay, yeah. Oh. Just, just use this one. Okay, so six, seven, a. This is four pieces. And you have four pieces. You should do the little group. yeah factor by grouping. So underline the first two. Make it like a little cat's nose, like that. The little whiskers on the nose. So you're gonna group the first part. Bring down the sign. And I group the second part. So the first part, what can I group out of the first part? 6x to the third and 12x squared. I can pull a 6 out of both of these. They both have a 6 in common. So do the numbers separately. So I'll pull out a 6. How many x's can I pull out of both of them? They both have two x's. X squared. So I can pull out x squared. If I do that, what am I left with? Well, this divided by 6x to the third divided by 6x squared is x. 12x squared divided by x squared is 2. There we go with that one. What can I pull out of both of these? It needs to be negative because of this negative symbol here. So I, I can pull out a negative two. two. And that will leave me with, pull out negative two, I'm left with x. And then if I pull a negative two out of negative four, I'm left with plus two. 
Remember, this has got to be negative. Then Whatever that symbol is up top. And you just group the inside and outside. Right? Yep, and then you group the outside and the inside. So the outside is 6x squared minus 2, and the inside part is x plus 2, or vice versa. You can write them either way. Okay, then b, c, and d are the box ones. Right? Yeah. yeah. So b is regular because there's no a in front. So that one you can just do the diamond method, and you're good to go. Right, so you can just, that one you can just do your diamond method. Um, you know what? I should let you folks. Uh, I'll let you folks do these ones now. So work on A, B, and C. B, you just do the diamond method. Remember the AC. Um, right, so this one would be the AC method. Where you have A times C plus B. And so my D is 4, my A times C is 3. So two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 4. C, because you do have a number in front of the x squared, your a is not 1, you have to do the extra step, either the box or the factor by grouping. <coughs> and then the one 2, just 2, they only have 2 like that? Check and see if it's a check for a difference between two squares. Mm -hmm. Right? Are they both squares, and are they is there a difference between them? In other words, are they subtracted? Well, what I did is I added in just a, a zero for the b. Okay, you can do that too. Okay. So this is a lot faster, a lot easier. Yeah. All right, this is that special one. Whenever you have a, just the x squared and a number, yeah. check and see if they're both squares and there's a minus between them. That's that quick and easy, super fast one. And there has to be a minus? There's yes, it has to be a minus. Not... Plus will not work. Okay. Yeah. That's why they call it difference between two squares and not the, oh, the sum of so, difference. Okay. Yeah, not the sum of two squares. Finish the first one. Um, B, do the one in the upper left, the x squared minus x minus 6, and then we'll go over both of those. So try that one. Oh, you just wrote that one? Yeah, x squared minus x minus 6. It's from the um, other practice exam. So I want you folks to get, kind of get a little bit of practice with, with both of them, seeing different, different options. No, uh, no, it's the same as B. Because they both have no number in front of the x squared. These. Uh, we'll go over B, um, B and, and then one to the left first. So this one here, two numbers that, mul that add, multiply to 3 and add to 4, 3 and 1. Remember, they, if this is positive, then that means you, that they're both going to be positive or both negative. Right? Because so, so then that means they have to add to 4. Um, so here... This is one of the simple ones. We can go straight to this. X plus 3, X plus 1, done. Okay. This is the easy one because there isn't an extra step. This one over here, same idea. Right, we, we're going to have our two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. But remember, because they multiply to negative 6, then 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. So the difference between them needs to be needs to be negative one. So they don't add to this kind of in a, in a sense they well they add to negative one, but they're but they're gonna be it's gonna be the difference between them. That one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative. So two numbers that if I just look at the numbers, they have there is one between them, two and three. So two and three have a difference of one between them. The difference has to be negative one, that means that the the, the three, the large one has to be negative. So when you add negative 3 and 2, you get negative 1. So then, that's the same thing. Super straightforward. x plus 2, x minus 3. Done. Um, 
this one below gets a little bit trickier because like I said, you have to have that extra step. So down below, oops. You'll do the diamond method. Three times negative two is negative six. Two numbers multiply negative six, add to negative one. Oh, we did that earlier, didn't we? Didn't we just do that? Negative three no. and two. But we can't just go straight up and do yeah. x minus x plus two and x minus three because that does not, when you multiply them, does not equal this. So we have to do the extra step. Um, we can either do the, I'll do the factor by grouping method first, where I take out the negative x and replace it with um, these two numbers. So that would be plus 2x minus um, 3x. Okay, so I just, I just replaced the negative x with, the, with that. Minus 2. And I'm going to practice by grouping. These two, drop down the minus sign, and then those two. So let's see, 3x squared and 2x. I can only pull out an x. I'm left with 3x plus 2. Drop down the minus, so I need to pull out a negative. So here I can't pull out anything. Add 3x and negative 3x and negative 2 So I'm just going to pull out a negative 1. That's all I can pull out. And I'm left with 3x. If I pull a negative 1 out of negative 2, I'm left with plus 2. So this becomes x minus 1. Sorry. x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. If you did the other direction, you'd have you'd still get these two, you just would pull out 3x plus 2. So either way you get this is the answer. If you did the box method, this is a different method, the box method, you'd say, okay, the first number, 3x squared, you put that in the first box. Last number, negative 2, you put that in the last box. And then the these two numbers here, you put them into these guys here. Right? So this becomes minus 3x and plus 2x. And then you say, okay, what can I pull out of 3x squared and negative 3x? Well, I can pull out a 3x. So I'll pull that out. And then what I like to do, what I think is better is saying, what, the, what times 3x gives me 3x squared? Well, 3x times x gives me 3x squared. So I know this should be x up here. Because these two should multiply to give me the one in the, kind of that's kind of between them. And then x times what gives me 2x? x times 2 gives me 2x. So that works out all right. And then 3x times what gives me negative 3x? Negative 1. And then the final check is, is negative 1 times 2 negative 2? Yes, so then you're done. So then you have x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. So you get the same answer either way. And the very last one, if you recognize this as a difference between two squares, it's super easy. So then you're like, okay, what's the square root of 25x squared? 25 is 5, x squared is x. Square root of 4 is 2. So then I'm just going to write two things here. 5x, 5x, 2 and 2. One's plus and one's minus. Done. That's it. That's all you got to do. How do you know one's plus one's minus? Because they have to be, because you have a negative four. It's, it's, that's, 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 that's how it is. If they're both plus, then you would not, they would not cancel out. So the thing that's nice about this one is they cancel out. 5x times 5x gives me 25x. 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4. And if you do the inners and the outers, you'll get 10x here and negative 10x here. So they add up and they cancel each other out. One has to be positive, one has to be minus, or else they don't, they don't cancel out. Do you see what I'm saying? Because this one's negative, you get a negative here, but this one's positive, you get a positive there, and they, they, they cancel. They, if you add them, you get zero. So when it's uh, two, uh, difference, difference between two, two squares, it has to be a difference. Squares. If it's not a difference, it doesn't work. We, I did this in class earlier. Yeah. I showed you how it didn't work if there were pluses. Okay, but after my and question. we don't have time to have five minutes before the exam to go over that. No, I don't want to. I just wanted to ask a question. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, if, is it always going to be plus and negative in this situation? Yes, always. Okay. It has to be. This has to be, it has to be, so this has to be negative, a difference. Yeah. 
and the bottom is always going to be one plus one minus one third. Always. Um, the other thing I feel like maybe I didn't do with you folks was um, um, I know I did this. I did we, we did this one in class, but there's another one I might I might give you where I might say something like. Um, uh, what was it? Let me read it for a second. Hold on. It might say, um, yeah, use the square root. Yeah. Use the square root property. Um, to solve for x. So if you're solving for x, that means you have an equal sign. Right, everybody on board with that? Solving means that there is an equal sign somewhere. If x equals something. That's the only way you can say x. Like here, see how there's an equal sign? I can say x equals something. This last one, no equal sign. I can't say x equals anything. All I can do is factor it and say and give it an option down here. Do you see what I'm saying? X, x is just this and that. It's not that x equals something there. So here. This one here, you're going to factor it, this top one, you'll factor it into like x, I think it's like x minus 8 and x plus 1 equals 0. So then you folks all know that from here you go into two spots, x minus 8 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. Everybody all right with that part? Yes? You've seen this before? Okay. Um, but I'm going to give you a second one where it's where it's like use the square root property. So I might give you something like, um, I don't know, like uh, 100x equals, let's do it this way, um, 200x equals 32. So first, uh, Hundred x equals x squared equals sixteen. So I have an x squared, but they're both they're both squares. So when um, let's see what's going on. If I say use the square root property, what does the square root property mean? Anybody remember that? Square root property. If I have two squares, a square equals another square. So let's make sure I have something similar that you have. Yep. I did do that. Okay, I'll give you something better. Um, 2x squared equals 200. How's that sound? So if I solve this, if I solve for x squared, if I get the x squared by itself, how do I do that? Nope. You would divide by 2. Both sides by 2? Then I'll have what? x squared equals 100. Now I have the x squared by itself. What can I do? I can square both sides. Right, that's the square root property. Hmm. So I didn't set the problem up well. But. So then I have x equals positive negative. Don't forget the positive negative. What's the square root of 100? 10. Ten. Ten. Everybody all right with that part? Yeah. Um, here's another one. <coughs> it might be a little harder. I might give you something like 3x, this might be the hardest I might give you, 3 times 2x minus 4 squared equals, um, what is 8, uh, 24. Okay, good? So, What's the first thing we need to do if I'm going to solve by the square root method? Divide by three. Yeah, I need to get the square root part by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by three. What do we have then? Two x squared minus four. Two x minus four squared equals what's twenty-four divided by three? Eighty-three. Eight. Oh. Shoot. I just totally screwed that up. Um, I went in 64. 
Um, 64 times 3 is 192. Okay, equals 64. Now, if I, now I can square both sides. And uh, what do you get then? 2x minus 4 equals, square root of 64 is 8. And then you still have to solve for x. So I should add 4 to both sides to get 2x equals 12, and then divide both sides by 2. Oh, sorry. Plus or minus. So I have 2. <laughs> Why am I making all sorts of mistakes right before your exam? Because I'm stressed out. Okay, relax. Deep breath, clear your mind, focus. Okay, so this is one version. The other version is 2x minus 4 equals <coughs> negative 8. So I have either positive 8 or negative 8. You all have a note card, right? Yeah. Make, make a note of that. And when we take a square root, it can be either positive or negative. And then I'm going to <coughs> add four to both sides. I'm so glad we went over this before your exam, because that would have been big trouble. Divide both sides by two. X equals negative two. So this has two answers. X is negative six, and X, or positive six and X is negative two. Okay, so we're gonna take a five minute break, and then we'll come back for the exam.